Hello, welcome back. I hope you're doing very well. Today we are looking at this, which is Drum Computer. It's an eight voice digital drum synth um, for iPad made by a company called Sugarbytes. It started out as a fully featured uh, VST plugin for use in doors, which was then ported over to the iPad. And it sounds absolutely wonderful. And for a couple of reasons, I think it's a brilliant companion to use with the Force. Now it costs 25 pounds from the uh, Apple App Store, um, which isn't cheap, but I do think that if you were to take the sound engine out of this and put it in a metal case and stick an Electron logo on the front, people would pay a thousand quid for it without blinking an eye. It really does sound that good. And on the subject of money, um, Sugarbytes have very kindly given me two download codes to give away. So two viewers can uh, get the app for free. Now this isn't a sponsored video. I bought this with my own money and I've been using it um, just because I like it basically. Um, I just reached out to Sugarbytes and asked if they wanted to give me a couple of codes for you guys and they said yes, very kindly. So thanks to Sugarbytes for that. So we're gonna move on to the Akai Force now and we will look at how to connect the iPad and the Force together, how to set up a drum computer so it understands what the Force is saying, um, and then a couple of ways to use the two together, um, both as a uh, drum module and also as a source for uh, creating sampled kits, because there's basically an infinite supply of samples in this app. So let's jump onto the Force now. Okay, before we can get cracking, we obviously need to get the Force and the uh, iPad talking to each other. And despite the fact it's the year 2022 and there are robots driving around on Mars, we still can't have MIDI and audio over USB easily for some bizarre reason. Um, so we've got some connectors and adapters here. On the MIDI front, I have um, MIDI coming out of the Force, 5-pin MIDI, into this iRig MIDI 2, which is essentially a 5-pin to USB uh, converter. The MIDI is coming out of that and going into this dongle um, for the iPad, which we need to use because Apple don't give us enough USB uh, connections. And then for audio out of the iPad, I have USB audio going into this, which is a little portable DAC or digi digital to analog converter. Um, and then the audio is going from the line out of that straight into the um, forces inputs. I'm using this because the headphone output on the dongle is not very good. And if you're making samples, you obviously want the best quality you can get. So hence using this little DAC. Um, on the Force, I've got three tracks set up. The first is an audio track, uh, which is listening to these two inputs, set to monitor, in, obviously. Um, then we have a MIDI track, this one here, uh, which I've called DC MIDI, or Drum Computer MIDI. Um, now this is, obviously, uh, this is a, a, a MIDI instrument, so the only way we can talk to it from the Force is with a MIDI track. And if you see here, I've got the input set to four, sorry, the output set to force, which is this output here, the built-in one, and it's on channel one. And then this uh, third track I've got is a drum track. And the reason I've got this is when I'm using a drum instrument, um, I much prefer to have the kind of the square or block um, layout for the pads, um, rather than the chromatic layout of using a MIDI instrument. Um, main reason being I tend to work in scale mode and obviously if you're using scale mode for drums it will filter some of the notes out and it won't work. So I've created this drum track here and I've got MIDI send to DC MIDI which is this track here which is talking to the synthesizer um, and that basically means every note I play here will just be forwarded to the MIDI uh, uh, track which is then sent to drum computer. So that's basically the why I've got it. You don't have to go through that second step, but I prefer it like that. So this is MIDI out, audio in. Now, before we get uh, looking at drum computer in more detail, once you've set this up, you'd expect to hear some sound. And we've got some sound. There's a kick drum there. But as you play the pads, you'll notice there's a slightly uh, unusual behavior. You can see we're playing a bunch of different notes and it's playing that drum chromatically as opposed to shifting up the pads. You might want it like that. Um, I don't. This is set up by default 
um, for use across a keyboard. Um, so we need to create a mapping that works for us. So you can see here when we hit this pad, our first drum is on C1, which is fine, but our second one isn't. So what we want is this drum to be on C sharp. So what we can do is just grab it and drag it onto the next note. And we're going to do that for the other pads. These all these colours obviously relate to the drum pads. Six, and I'm just going to go up a little bit. Seven, and a bit further. Eight, sorry, I probably should have done this as a fast forward. Okay, so we've now got our eight instruments on eight consecutive notes, which is what we want. Now we only need to do that once because we can save that mapping. So if we go to this mapping button here, press it, then press save. We just type in force. I'm just putting three because I've done this before already. And now we have a mapping that we can reuse and it will start off by default on that. So that's how we get the two kind of talking to each other in a way that we want them to. Um, the only other setting that you might need to mess with is if you go to the little cog up here, uh, we're going to get into this, don't worry, um, but there's an advanced um, clock or sync um, uh, button here. And if something isn't working, this is where you'll find um, your sync sources. Um, ours worked by default, so we don't need to mess with it. Um, but this is where you would go to fix that. So MIDI, you can see here, iRig MIDI 2. So any problems, if something's not working, tap the cog. So now we're going to move on and we are going to have a look at the uh, synthesizer itself and uh, look at some of the things it can do and then we'll explore using it as a module and also using it to create some sample kits. Okay, I'm going to give you a quick tour of the various kind of screens or, or modes of drum computer. I'm going to keep it fairly brief and specific to using it with the force. Um, but if you, having watched this, decide you want to buy it and use it as a standalone uh, drum machine, there's a tutorial by Gavinsky's Tutorials, uh, which is really worth watching. It's about an hour long and it digs into every detail. Um, and I will put a link to that in the description. So this is one of those user interfaces that when you first look at it, it is almost uh, kind of intimidating. There's so much going on um, that it is a little bit off-putting, but actually it's one of those occasions where after a very short period of time, you come to realize they've done an absolutely brilliant job of the design of it, and it is much more intuitive to use than it looks. So <clears throat> you can see at the bottom here, We've got our eight drum pads, which are what we mapped to the force earlier. And we cycle through these uh, drum uh, voices by these track select buttons here. And you can see the display changing. And what's changing here is that the, this is the sound generation part of the synth. And it's made up of three modules. And I'm not gonna go into huge detail of each of these mo uh, modules. Suffice it to say, they each do different things and they are stacked together uh, are fully blendable um, to create uh, or to, to co combine three different sounds which become the overall drum voice or drum sound. So the first is a resonator, which I believe is modeled on a, um, a Roland TR resonator. The second one has options for either, excuse me, wavetable or analog. So a wavetable is a wavetable. Analog gives you um, an analog waveform or a virtual analog waveform. And the last one is resynth or sample. And if we just tap on sample, you'll see there's a, there's a big library of samples in there. So without going into massive detail, um, the potential for creating sounds from scratch or tweaking uh, sounds is absolutely enormous. And I think if you've got time and inclination, there probably isn't a single drum or percussion sound that you couldn't make with the tools that you, you have here. There's all these envelope generators. There's almost infinite tweakability. Um, you can also see that each, uh, each channel has um, a filter, distortion, compressor, high and low uh, EQ, as well as uh, uh, envelopes as well. There's just a ton of stuff that you can do in here. Now, if you're not into building sounds from scratch, and this 
is seemingly or seems like it could be too complicated for you um it's i'd still recommend this uh this app based on the sheer number and quality of the uh kits that have been shipped with it so if we tap on the um this button here which basically gives us all of the presets there are um a, a library of kits that have been created by Sugarbytes and a bunch of other artists as well. I I think there's probably about 250 of them in here. Um, and each of those obviously has eight drums in it as well. Um, so even if you don't want to make stuff from scratch, I, I'm i fairly convinced that whatever drum sound you're looking for, drum synth sound, I should say, you will find in here somewhere. So it's really flexible on, on that note. The other thing, which leads us to the sequencer page, um, I'm not going to go into this in a huge amount of detail um, because we're obviously going to be sequencing it with force. But you can see here that it's when I selected that preset kit, it's also loaded in a pattern. And every single kit in here comes with a pattern. Just a brief overview of the sequencer. If we play this, you can see that it is a step sequencer and we can basically add notes or take them out just by tapping the, uh, the timeline. You can also see that the playheads are going in different directions. And that's because each of these uh, sequencer lanes can have a different resolution, uh, can play in different directions, it can be randomized. And at the bottom here, we've got per step options for velocity, probability, um, offset, decay, blah, 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 blah. Um, Basically, it's an enormously um, flexible sequencer, even though it actually looks quite simple. And if you change, if you have a couple of these lanes running on different uh, resolutions and running in different directions, it's very easy to create um, quite sort of almost generative sounding, certainly evolving sounding uh, drum patterns. And you can see here, we've got a bunch of uh, patterns that we can select and they can be chained together as well. This is what allows you to chain patterns together, basically to create a song. So all, all of that to do with the sequencer, basically um, the way I would sum that up is if you did want to use this as a standalone drum machine, it's got everything sequencing wise, you would need to do that. So this page is the kit page and it basically has some quite top line uh, or, or kind of global controls for each of the drum voices. So we have a decay, uh, a modify, pitch, um, and we can basically, we can randomize the drums as well. If we don't like the drums playing, we just tap on that and it will uh, put a random drum in of the same category. You can see this one's a kick drum at the moment. And we don't have to stick to the, um, to the uh, kits that have been provided for us. We can create our own kits. So if we select one of these drums here, it doesn't matter which one, and then tap in here, we can, we've got the option to either have a random one or if we tap into the top part of it, we can look at the, all of the different categories, hi-hats, percussion, rim shots, so on, and build our own kits as well. So all of that together um, paints a picture of it being incredibly um, flexible. Um, there is a, a, a huge potential for sound design if that's your thing. There's also um, a, a massive library of both kits, drums, and patterns if you're more of a preset tweaker, which is kind of my kind of thing, really. Uh, before we move on to the next section, I'm just going to um, play you a couple of patterns just so you can see what it sounds like. So this is the um, Sugarbytes Analog Kit. Another of the Sugar Bites kits, quite dubstepy. Kind of a glitch kit with some kind of mangled vocals in the background. Electro. So just from listening to those few patterns, you can see there's a there's a huge variety of sounds. It can do quite traditional um, kind of Roland TR sort of drum sounds, anything up to absolute glitch. I've actually heard people describe this as sounding quite like an electron mono machine or machine drum. I've never used one of those, but it's definitely got a character of its own. 
So there's a really excellent button up here called make kit which you press and it will just randomize a kit for you so when we move on to the next section of the video which is using it as a module and using it as a um, as a source of samples to uh, create sampled kits for the to use on the force this make kit button will make a lot of sense when we start playing with that but anyway that's enough of the overview because i've been talking for too long let's move on to sequencing this from the force and creating some patterns and using some midi tricks one of the drawbacks about using hardware drum machines is that they can be quite difficult to mix sometimes a lot of the analog uh, drum machines if you use the stereo out the stereo mix out you can't even pan the individual drums, let alone add compression or EQ to the different sounds. And if you want to control each sound like that, you then need to use all of the analog outs, which means you need an interface. It's got eight at least inputs. It can be quite kind of clunky and cumbersome. And even something like the Electron Digitone, which I use, I absolutely love the way it sounds, but the four tracks it's got, there's no option to EQ them individually. Um, it's, it's a, it can be a pain and quite difficult to mix. And that's why I really like uh, Drum Computer because each track has got um, EQ, as we can see here, as I said in the overview, we've got compression, um, we've got um, distortion. And then if we go to the kit page, we've got a really nice um, kind of finalizer, which is basically an exciter or a maximizer all combined. So we've got uh, compression, a transient kind of shaper, three different types of um, saturation, which this thing sounds really nice. I wish they'd make it as a bit of hardware we could use. Um, so all of that combined means it's really easy to shape and mix the sound. So what I've done, you can see here, I've created a little custom kit and I've made a pattern which is um, sitting here. Um, and it, it, it's I've tried to make something which demonstrates the less standard sounds that this thing can do. And if you just have a look at these drum parts, as I scan through them, you can see that I've made adjustments to the EQ, uh, compression and distortion to some of these to show how you can shape it. And we've got different levels and different panning and sends here. And this is what it sounds like. So it's quite easy, I think, to... I've, so I've got two toms playing and a kick drum, and they've, I've been able to get them to sound quite good together which is something that you would find quite difficult to do at times with an analog machine because you can't apply any cuts to the EQ. So that's one of the reasons I really like it. I find it really easy um, just to dial in a nice mix that sits together quite nicely. And as I said, the um, this finalizer um, module is really, really nice. Um, it's got a tape tube, and I don't know what that is. It's another kind of distortion, but it sounds great. Whatever you do with it, it sounds really good. The second thing I like about it is if we go to the um, settings page, it's got really good MIDI um, implementation. So these are our eight voices and these are CC values that control various parameters. So if we look at our hi-hat here, that's uh, instrument number three. So if we go to number three, we can see the decay of that is controlled by CC94. So if we go into the force, and go to our macros page and set up a macro and we need to apply it to the MIDI track, not the drum track we're playing it with because the MIDI track is what is um, controlling the synth. So that's DC MIDI. Edit and if we scroll down to 94 and add that there, let's make it momentary. Now we can see that this is going to, oops, sorry, wrong one is going to control the um, the decay of our kind of hi-hat sound. Which is really great because that's brilliant for performance and obviously you can record automation in as well. So those two things together, the fact that um, the EQing and the mixing or the tone shaping, and I'm talking about the corrective EQ, um, or the mixing EQ and compression that you would use is is so good. And the fact that the MIDI implementation is great and we've got all of these CC controls, as much as any other app I've used, when you plug these two together, it really makes the drum computer feel like it is part of the force. They're so well integrated with each other. Um, 
I, I, it, it, does, it almost feels like a plugin that's just got a different screen, if you know what I mean. And that's why I really like using it as a, a drum module for the force. Okay, the last thing I want to show you before I wrap this up is how quick and easy it is to make um, sampled kits. Um, there's so many great sounds in here that you might want to um, just build some kits, um, especially if you're playing live, because if you are playing live, all of these dongles and connections, um, every one of those is a failure point when you're playing live. So you might want to move some of these sounds onto sampled kits. Um, in particular, there's some wonderful um, percussion sounds in here. So what I've done, I've got the um, force sampler set up um, with a threshold and it's armed now. So it will start recording as soon as, as soon as we make some sound. So what I'm going to do is I've picked a kit that I quite like. I'm going to play each of these eight sounds and then I'm going to tap the make kit button, which will generate a completely new kit, which will give us another eight random sounds, which in total will be 16, which is a, a nice kind of size for a force kit. So let's do that. So we're armed, we're just going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, make kit. One, two, three, six seven eight stop the sampler so we're not going to we don't want to assign this to a track um, and we're going to call it dc kit Ooh, kit sample sample come on touch screen so we're not going to save it to a kit we're just going to uh, save it to the sample pool so we hit key uh, keep sorry and then we go to uh, sample edit and we can see it here, DC kit sample. So first thing we're going to do is process it uh, to normalize it just to give us a bigger sample um, amplitude. And then I'm going to do this very roughly. Um, obviously, you would spend more time on this, but we're going to chop it using the manual kind of um, lazy chop method. So obviously very sloppy chops, um, you would spend more time on this, but we're now going to convert that to a kit. So we press shift convert, new drum track using slices. I normally go for pad parameters and press do it. And now if we go to our matrix mode, we can see we've got a new track here with our, uh, with our chops we've just made. We've got one extra one because there was that gap of space in the middle. Obviously, I would need to go in there and um, kind of clean up the slice points, but I just did that so you can see how easy it is. So what the way I tend to use that is to find a kit I really like and I sample that and then I just hit make a kit um, to give me some extra uh, an extra eight random ones. And more often not, than not, I find that that gives me some quite nice counterpoint sounds um, to the, to the uh, drums that I specifically chose. Um, to make that kit it's just really nice and it, as you say that took what less than two minutes um, so yeah that's brilliant I absolutely love that functionality the make a kit button is brilliant so to, to wind all of this up um, given how much this app can do how great the sound engine is how big the or, or the preset library is how good the functionality is with the mixing and the effects um, and how good the MIDI implementation is. When you look at this as being 25 quid uh, in the App Store, it might seem expensive at first, but taking all of those things into consideration, I think it's actually a bit of a steal, to be honest, because even if you just wanted to sample the kits out of this and not use it as a standalone module, um, I think it's worth the money. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up now. Um, I hope that was enjoyable, and information about the prize draw is coming up. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. To enter the prize draw competition, all you need to do is comment something below this video and I will pull all of the names together and draw two at random. The entry period will end at midnight on the 25th of March, that's midnight GMT. And I will do the draw on Saturday the 26th and announce the winners then and contact them directly. Thanks again for watching and if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and all that YouTube nonsense.
Cheers. Bye.